Hey, hello friends. Thank you for joining me again today. So I started this painting late yesterday afternoon. Painted uh, somewhat into the night, 11 o'clock anyway, I think it was before I hung up my brushes for the day. And I'm happy to say that I'm quite happy with it this morning. <laughs> you know, there's always that day after, <laughs> morning after principle you wonder how you're going to like a painting after you've slept on it for a night happy to say I, I like this quite a bit so everything you're looking at here is acrylics with the exception of an oil glaze thin oil glaze uh, mostly a brown warm glaze over the most of the canvas and then a little bit of darkening in the, those three corners so that's it oh and then a tiny bit of dark details um like here on the fence so at, at this moment and i like the fence very much the way it is uh, i don't have to do much to it at all but at the moment it's a pencil drawing and then in acrylics, negative painted, in other words, paint, painting the spaces in between, so negative painted. And then um, brushed, painted with a, with a little bit of dark detail. So I'm pretty happy with how that's looking right now. Okay, so that's where we're at. We're now into oil painting. Once you get into oils, of course, you can't go back to acrylics. So from now on, it's all oils. And this is my famous, <laughs> in my own mind, <laughs> famous to me and my 13 viewers, <laughs> uh, fuzz layer. So where in the world did the fuzz layer come from? First of all, let me back up and say, I'm a growing artist. I'm happy to say I'm a growing artist. And I hope you are too. That means I'm always experimenting a little bit. In fact, you could really say, without too much exaggeration, every single paint, painting has a little bit of experiment in it. With every single painting, I shift slightly, left, right, up, down, try something a little bit different. And, uh, and then in the midst of those experiments, I'll discover something that works pretty well. So this is what I call the, the fuzz layer. It definitely helps to paint with two hands with the, in the fuzz layer. Because if you paint with one hand, I think, if I painted with one hand, I would chicken out. <laughs> I wouldn't have the nerve to do what I'm doing. Um, which, as you can see, is very, very, very loose painting. At the moment, I have pale... Let me put, get my reference back up here. So this is my, my reference sketch printed out as a watercolor sketch tweaked heavily in Photoshop according to my my uh, client's instructions there we go can you see it up there almost there it is up there and uh, so that's what I'm going by um, okay fuzz layer again for those of you who are regulars you get tired of hearing all this stuff I'm sure Fuzz layer, soft edges, extremely soft edges. I could also call this the messy layer. <laughs> dedicated messiness, dedicated soft edges. This particular technique um i know ex ironically i know exactly the day that i started it was july 4th 2016 i was painting in downtown raleigh you know, most familiar places to paint it was the fourth of july it was a festival so thousands of people around i just happened to remember and i was painting as is often the case I, when i'm painting a festival i was painting a street full of people and normally, I wait until the final edit layer to put 
color on the people, on their clothing. And for some reason, I picked up my brushes and started fuzzing in. Hi, Javi. I started fuzzing in uh, the color on the on the people's clothing. And voila, I looked at it and said, wow, that worked really well. So that started a new layer. I wasn't sure, with, as with every experiment, I wasn't sure if it was going to stick or if it was just a passing fancy. Well, it is not only stuck, it's actually continued over the last two and a half years and continued to grow in significance. Okay, so I actually do more of it. At the moment, I'm doing atmospheric perspective. The fuzz layer is perfect. I'm just fuzzing in uh, soft sky color on top of whatever is supposed to be far away back there. Okay, I'm going to have to take a little break here real quick. Sorry about that. Um, I'll be back in just uh, three minutes. Happy with what's going on and I'll catch There, are we back? Are we back? Let me make sure my sound is working okay. There we go. Hello, Melissa. I hope you're still, I hope you're still here. Uh, so how long did it take me? I started painting yesterday afternoon. Uh, that was right after supper. It wasn't afternoon, it was evening. I started painting yesterday at about 6.30 or 7 o'clock in the evening and finished at 11. So four hours, four hours to get to this point. And then started at what? 10.15 this morning. Okay, so more of fuzz layer. I say often that it's easy for an oil painting, oil acrylic painting, very easy for an oil acrylic painting to have too many hard edges. Okay. Nearly impossible for a painting to have too many soft edges. Now, I will con admit that with that little <laughs> saying, <laughs> I am reflecting my own personal weaknesses. <laughs> okay? I, I know that is the case. I, I speak with the with the conviction of a of a convert. You know what I mean by that? When you when you discover something in life, late in life, in your adulthood, then you once you discover something for yourself, then you feel like everybody else needs to discover it too. That's me. <laughs> so I can I admit that right up front. <laughs> However, as because I'm a teacher and I'm always always looking and evaluating other people's paintings as well as my own and I'm called upon to judge shows fairly fairly occasionally um, I have discovered <laughs> that many other people have the same disease that I had other comments David Mercer do you never sleep my friend <laughs> good to have you on board huh? well, David I'm assuming that when I'm painting you're painting right is that is that a safe assumption <laughs> you just had me on in the background. <laughs> uh, thank you, David. I appreciate that. Hello, Sharpie from Singapore. My goodness, how fun. How fun to have you on board. Um, thank you, David. I, I am, I tell you, I'm quite happy with the painting uh, this morning. And that's, that's such a relief. Such a... You know, you never know After, when you have your nose in a painting for hours and hours and hours, then you go away. Sometimes when you come back, you're not as thrilled with it as you were when you left. But happily, that was not the case this morning. I came back and said, ooh, 
In fact, I will go ahead and tell you that, can you, are you, yeah, you're seeing the whole painting, that, uh, I could sign this and be done, except for the dog, but they're little things, little things, uh, the flowers, a little detail, I want these to look like irises, black-eyed Susans, these already look like, um, daylilies, uh, hydrangeas, and so on. The, 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 my client is very, very particular, of, understandably particular about the plants in her garden. She, she really, we spent a lot of time figuring out what plants to put where. And uh, so I, I definitely, in the final edit layer, I need to come in and do quite a bit of plant painting. But um, my, my painting as it is right now is delightfully loose, I, I would say. Uh, looser than most of my paintings at this point. I hope that's because I'm maturing. I hope it's because I'm getting better. I, I, I know I'm getting better in the long haul, but I, I hope I'm getting better, you know, day by day by day by day. So I managed to keep this looser than I sometimes do. In fact, uh, I have less fuzz to do on this painting than, than, than is often the case because I have managed to integrate the fuzz into the acrylic stages. So it actually, actually makes me quite happy. My feeling David, so how the smell of oils out of the smell. David asks a very good question about the control of smells. And first of all, I won't I don't think I'm necessarily I'm not the poster child. I'm not the greatest example because I don't think I control a smell as, as well perhaps as I should. Um, last night, yesterday evening when I was painting especially when I first put the liquid. The liquid is by far the smelliest part of my painting process. And uh, I wish there was a medium out there that, that smelled better, but I haven't found it yet. So a fast dry medium that is. And of course the problem is in the fast dry. Anything that's fast drying, what does that mean? Physics class. If it's fast drying, that means molecules are quickly leaving. That's why it smells bad. Um, but so I had a fan, a big fan sitting on a you know, tall fan, floor fan, right here, five feet to my left, blowing on me. All that, of course, that up in the winter, it, it's chilly here yesterday. All that means is blowing that smell into the hole downstairs. <laughs> so not an ideal, not an ideal scenario at all. David, you ask a very good question. And uh, of course, and I have, what, eight, uh, not eight other people, nine people living in our house right now. So it's not like I have the whole place to myself, including little children. So, okay, I want to do some, a little bit of fuzz down here and then I might be done with the fuzz layer. Unusually short. I'm very happy with the little bit of atmospheric perspective that I did up there. One, I guess one other specific comment about, again, what I call my fuzz layer is that normally um, that's when I do my fuzzy sky holes, which ought to be called tree holes, where, where there's holes in the trees. Um, I'll come back in the final layer and do sharp, hard edge uh, sky holes, but I do the fuzzy ones here in the fuzz layer. <laughs> you know what's that? I don't know if this is permanent or not, but I started using a roll of toilet paper there uh, to wipe off my brushes with. I'm finding it's a little bit easier than the Kleenex tissues I was using. <laughs> Okay, 
So once again, anything that you, if you want it to appear as though it's really glowing, just exploding with sunlight, then you make the, you make it glow, you make the edges very soft. So this path going around the corner here is very, very important. The glow, the light hitting that. So I'll come in in my final, well, let me go ahead and show you. I'll do a little bit of final layer right here and just show you what I will do. There, so I've mixed up a almost white. Can you see that? Just a few hard edges. That's that's all, and that that's enough of that. Then I'll get a little bit darker down here. By the way, the, the yellow I'm using right now is. Let me see if I can find that tube. It's something funny. Here it is, Michael Harding, which is wonderful paints, by the way, Michael Harding. Uh, transparent oxide yellow. <laughs> transparent oxide yellow. Um, very nice stuff, not the usual. Again, just experimenting a little bit with various colors. I'm going to add a tiny bit of uh, Indian yellow to that. Tiny, even tinier bit of orange to <laughs> Mixing colors. It's always the quest for the perfect color, right? Always. Okay, back to back to fuzz now. I'm not, I don't want to get bogged down in details at this stage. Okay, one other place that I'm going to do fuzz, and that's on this the other focal point. By the way, I'm not sure what the focal point of this painting is now. Um, I'm thinking it's here, but it's a very close second is these birdhouses. They're, they're coming out more prominent in the painting than they were in the sketch. I hope my client likes that. I think it's beautiful. I think I think those that is really critical. I, in the course of painting, of course, you know, I moved them, I I raised it a little bit, and so on and so forth. But to me, those two areas and the dog is a psychological focal point, definitely not a visual focal point, which is just the way I want it. Okay, so up here, just a little bit more. As you can see, there's already quite a bit of fuzz, so to speak, quite a bit of glow on this, the sun hitting the swing. Just wanna add just a little bit more of it, a little bit more glow. And also to the front post of the swing. Now, and I don't know about you, but if this, if this doesn't look like a crazy way to paint to you, I'm not, I'm not sure. <laughs> and you're way ahead of me. <laughs> because this still feels like a crazy way to paint. Just, what are you doing? You're messing up. You're messing up the painting. <laughs> I'm going to do a little bit of glow on this grass before I, before I leave the glow layers. This will be a really short broadcast here this morning. Because I'm going to... Uh, just limit it to just painting this glow layer. Let me tell you what I'm going to do next. This, again, for anybody that wants to know what it's like to be an artist. Um, pull up my phone here. Before I started the broadcast this morning, this is my backup phone, which is, I never had any, I never realized how uh, totally useful a backup cell phone could be. So I I googled a number of images. Yellow butterflies, black lab, so get it? That's him. Uh, butterflies, 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 uh, daylilies, dogwoods, and so forth. So after my fuzz layer, it, it's sort of a get serious time. I'm going to sit down 
make sure I have my butterflies accurately drawn. And I'm actually going to do that with pencils, these black, sort of like grease pencils. I'm going to draw the dog, draw the butterflies. They're all sketched in here loosely. Uh, butterfly, dog, daylily, and so on. And uh, I'm going to do that without you watching because, again, small details, a little bit just too hard for you to see really well. And then, um, then I'll come back and do the final edit later. The final edit or light <coughs> opaque highlights or sparkle would be a good word. Okay, but right now I'm doing, I want, in a few places, I want it to look like the sun is just exploding. Let me talk about that for just a minute. The most important aspect of a painting is play of light. Okay. Right? You with me? Track with me so far? Let me let me use some other words. Let me slam a few doors shut on you. <laughs> Gently. <laughs> Play of light does not equal, does not mean which way is the light coming from. <clears throat> That's not play of light. And as I say, occasionally, you don't get any points. At least for me, you get zero points for getting that answer right. That's very mean of me. Let me tell you why I'm being so mean. When I'm with my fellow painters, our painters forum and so on, and some of you put up a painting, somebody in the audience, one of the other artists will say, which way is the light coming from? Sometimes the artist goes, whoops. <laughs> Most of the time the artist goes, because if somebody asks a question, then that means we're not sure. And it goes, well, <laughs> that's how it starts. But, well, it's kind of, I think it's coming from the upper left, <laughs> right? Um, First of all, when you're painting, that that's just entry level. The reason I say you, I don't give you any points for that is because I don't want beginners, beginner, beginner, beginners, to get that right and then to sit down and to pat themselves on the back and say, what a good boy am I. I don't want you to do that because if you do that, you haven't done play of light yet. All you've done is, duh, got me this simple, 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 simple thing. It's like when I was in grad school 100 years ago, I had to take the hardest class I've ever had to take probably, and I got no credit for it because it was Greek. I had to, had to take the Greek language, had to take an entire semester, it was an entire year, it was called baby Greek. And you had to take it in order to get into adult Greek, real Greek. You had to take it but you didn't get any credit, semester hours for it. <laughs> That's sort of what I think about. That's the way it is for getting, which, which way is the light coming from? You have to take it, you have to get it right, but you don't get any credit. The reason I won't give you credit is because you have, it's not until you start doing play of light that you start giving yourself credit. Okay, so play of light is not which way is the light coming from? Clearly the light's coming from the left. Play of light is words like this, words like this. Light bouncing, that's a weak one. Light exploding, light refracting, light shearing, light uh, glancing, glistering, blistering, <laughs> violent verbs, violent language. Okay, then I'm being a little bit facetious, but really want to get the point. Light doing dynamic things. That's play of light. So when I say I want, I want sunlight exploding off the grass down here. That's play of light. That makes sense? Got some comments down there I'll get to in just a second. Um, maybe just a tiny bit more. Little bits of sunlight coming through and hitting uh, grass down there. Okay, so that and that's part of the reason why it's so messy, because it's light exploding off that grass exploding off the sidewalk here. 
uh, exploding, because I'm using the same word over and over, that's not good, but exploding off the corner of that where the sun is hitting that swing. Okay, comments, let me see what they are. Cruise Hawk. Well, no, let me back up. David says, Thomas Kincaid did a hot box. He called it a box with a fan and a hose connected to the window. You know, I used to do that too. That's a great idea. I, I, I did that when I, back in the day when I did airbrush. Um, I did airbrushing right inside a window that was open. It had a box fan in the window. So all of my airbrushing fumes went straight out the window. Yeah. I need to work on that, David. Thanks for the good tip. Okay, and then Chris Hawk says, Dan, might you continue broadcasting when you take your breaks? Oh, that's a good question. Chris Hawk, I would seriously consider that, okay? Um, that's a good question. I mean, good good observation, good tip. I will seriously consider that, Chris Hawk. Thanks for, thanks for saying that. Um, I'll just turn up the music, eh? <laughs> Turn up the music and walk away. Let you look at the painting for a while, for a short break. I, thank you. I think I think I will start doing that. That's a good point. Um, okay, I'm, I'm just about finished. Where else do I want a little more glow? I think on these roses back here, um, they are a really a salmon. I would call it coral color. There we go. That's a better. But if, if it's a rose, you don't want to call it salmon, do you? So rose colored, um, uh, ro uh, salmon colored roses back here. And yeah, just enough, just enough light hitting those that it'll bounce off them a little bit. <laughs> now I'm just, I like the, I like the, uh, the orange color that I've got on my brushes and I'm just using it. Okay, I think I'm done with the fuzz layer. So I, I've told you what I'm going to do and take a few minutes to make sure I've got my butterflies, my dog, and a few flowers very carefully rendered. Then I will come back and I'll do, I'll do part B, 500, Daily Art Adventure number 502B. Some of you newcomers, you don't understand what was that DAA at the end of my title. It's Daily Art Adventure number 502. Um, I used to call, that used to be at the beginning of my title, Daily Art Adventure number, but then I discovered that that was hurting my search uh, ranking because nobody goes on YouTube looking for Daily Art Adventure. So I've changed that now I just put it at the end. All right, so there's the fuzz layer. For those of you who are perhaps emerging painters or even mature painters and want to know how somebody else does it, that's how I do it. So I'll be back, I would think probably within an hour to do part B. Thanks so much for